In the next minutes, I will speak. I will explain what to ask or what to expect in the field of dermatology ultrasound from the point of view of the dermatologist and from the point of view of the sonographer, or in the case of both, like in me. When we speak about skin cancer, we have to take into account that there are, there are two main kinds of cancers, as my previous colleague has told you, melanoma, this devastating tumor, and non-melanoma skin cancer. It's very important to make this, this, this distinction. I recommend this paper by my colleague, uh, Dr. Chris and, and Professor uh, Gadea, who reduce all these, the, those, the, these tumors. From the beginning, this melanoma cancer, this, this ugly mold here, has this ultrasound, as you see, highly vascular. That means, as Professor Badea, this, he said this morning, in this very interesting session, is, it indicates malignancy. Then, what is important is what information should we offer to our dermatologist, the relevant echo info. The dermatologist is expecting us to give the thickness of the melanoma, it correlates very well with breast low index, the nearest structures, and the metastasis. If we su supply this information, our dermatologist will be very happy, and this information is really, really useful. You have to take into account that this uh, malignant tumor behaves from the metastatic point of view in a very peculiar way, such as it produces in transit metastasis that can be uh, easily localized with ultrasound, nodal metastasis, and <coughs> even distant metastasis. Another classical tumor, this is the most frequent, is basal cell carcinoma. This is also a malignant tumor, but it has the advantage or not the, the, com the inconvenience of that it has rarely has a metastasis. It's very frequent, that is the, that's the, the other point. One out of five in this room will have basal cell carcinoma, you have to take it into account, and when this happens, for the, the clinician treating you, it will be very nice to have this information. Which skin structures are being invaded? Dermis, epidermis, subdermal tissue, and which structures are nearby in the case an operation has to be carried out? This is the third one, the third one in the three most, uh, most common tumors, this is ischemic cell carcinoma. Ischemic cell carcinoma has a mixed behavior between melanoma and basal cell carcinoma. It's invasive, but also has the possibility of metastasis. Then the information we should offer our dermatologists should be the depth in millimeters, as we know that more than two millimeters has a high risk of recurrence, is high risk skin cancer, skin cancer, the nearest structures to prepare for the surgery, and if there's metastasis, mainly in the nodal aspect. We can also offer information about other tumors, but you have always to remind that the most important thing is providing useful information for the clinician too. Let's go with the second major part, that's inflammatory skin diseases. This is the most difficult part of dermatology. Inflammatory disease in dermatology is the name, is the way of naming red skin in 10,000 different ways. That's the reason why dermatology is so difficult, because everything is kind of red. Then the role of ultrasonography, maybe it's not so good to perfectly assign a name to this, uh, to this inflammation, but give some other inflammation about what is happening inside the skin. This is the case, for example, of a viral world in which this is normal skin and inflammation starts in epidermis and goes up to dermis. In the case of lichen planus, sometimes lesions are active, sometimes lesions are not. In this case, for example, we know that this lesion is active and in the case of hair follicles, for example, we are now studying hair follicles. This is a case of tinea capitis in which we are seeing how the, the follicle is being destroyed by the trichophyton. 
then what information would be useful for our dermatologist to provide? First of all, is there any inflammation in the skin I'm seeing? It's very easy, it's red, but it's not red, it's not red, it's, maybe it's not so easy. Where is the inflammation? Is it superficial? Is it deep? And how much inflammation is there? The paradigm of this is hydrodenitis superactiva. Hydrodenitis superactiva is very complicated from a 2D, two-dimensional point because now in this, uh, this uh, picture, it's very difficult to see where is the node, where is the abscess, and where is the fistula. And the only way to discriminate these lesions would be through ultrasound. Thanks to the publication of Dr. Bosman, we started to understand this disease in three dimensions. And we realized that there was a progression of the lesions as they were deeper. There was a gradient of inflammation with this deeper lesion in contrast with the superficial lesion. Then the patients having mostly these lesions deserve a more aggressive treatment than those having these kind of lesions. Evolution. You can also provide your dermatologists or your clinicians information about if it's working, if the treatment is really working. For example, it is hydrogenitis suprastiva in a gluteal case. You see now here inflammation and how after treatment inflammation has decreased. We see it with the changes in B mode and both Doppler. The third major part is aesthetics. <coughs> this is t our typical aesthetics patient who comes for treatment of these small venous lakes. But there's something that it calls my attention, that is this bump all around the lips. Then, as a good sonographer, I scan the lips. <coughs> and what do I see? This is what we call a snow pattern or snowstorm pattern that indicates me that this patient is, has silicone oil inside and no further treatment should be carried out. What information is relevant for the clinician and what information can we provide the clinician for him to feel comfortable with ultrasound? First of all, is any filler there? Where is the filler? Is it deep? Is it superficial? What filler is there? Is there, is there any complications related to the filler? And we would know it with the extension of the filler and the doppler. The doppler is fundamental for us. This is the basic schema of the skin. And where do I look for the, the, the filler? The, fil the filler are usually in the dermal subdermal area and in the subcutaneous tissue. If you have to look for a filler, this is the target areas. The same as in tumors. The important thing is here is, is there any silicone, yes or no? If there's any silicone, you are mm, advised not to, to make more procedures. If there's no silicone, you will have to know what kind of filler you have. From the mm, clinical point of view, it's important that there are reabsorbable uh, fillers such as hyaluronic acid and non-reabsorbable fillers such as acrylamide and silicone oil. I'm going to show you the three major patterns we have in sonography of the fillers. This is the first one, the first you have to recognize because this changes the, the story of the patient respect to future treatments. This is a snow pattern, you cannot see anything behind this. The vapular pattern, this is the most common, it's very typical of hyaluronic acid and polyacrylamide. And the cottony pattern, this cottony pattern is the final evolution pattern of some of some uh, fillers and for polylactic and hydroxyapatite. There are also times that when the filler is starts to behave in a strange way, such in this case. In this case, the, our patient here, not very handsome, had periorbital uh, edema and we didn't know why. Then we performed the scan and we saw this and this. This is multiple filler inside with a storm, a storm pa uh, pattern and a vacuolar pattern compressing the vessels. Then it, this leads to edema. Then we are now knowing what is happening really with our patient. And as this is a transitory, as it's reservable, the, this will be better with time. 
in some cases it's not so difficult, it's very difficult to identify the fillers. And we have the help of illustography. Illustography, in difficult cases, is going to show, up, uh, show us hidden vesicles here, you see, that appear as rigid areas. These were hidden here, and with the aid of illustography, we found more implants there that were just causing sanctions to our patient. Thank you.